saw Depeche Mode on top of the pops playing a keyboard about that, that big with one finger. And they were clearly making a statement about not being able to play. a huge influence on us. It changed a lot of things when we first saw him play on TV. There's a man outside And a long coat grey has in a cigarette He was the, the big reason why we, we got into the way we recorded that album. It was just so simple um, and effective in its simplicity that, uh, you know, just kind of like a couple of keyboard sounds, but you got the emotion from it. Um, again, all electronic. Uh, we were kind of, uh, prior to us, you know, become a duo, we were in a band and had the sort of, you know, the, the set five-piece band that played and, you know, a couple of guitar, a keyboard player, guitar player, bass player and drummer. Um, and it was very standard. And then that Gary Newman coming along kind of changed everything. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces. You can just do it yourself. That changed everything of how you approach music. That's why we were able to just stay as the two of us. We didn't need a drummer. There was the Lynn drum machine, you know, and uh, we didn't need other players. We could program the keyboard. Um, you didn't need complicated guitar lines. You could literally, as Ron said, just, you know, that's it. I mean, Mad World is just a bass synth, pretty much. Living in a, an apartment in Central Bath, my wife, or she was my girlfriend at the time, uh, was running three jobs so that I could sit at home in my unemployed state and just sit around all day strumming an acoustic guitar. I was a big fan of the Paul Simon song, Still Crazy After All These Years. Now I sit by my window and I watch the cars. He goes, I sit by the window and I watch the cars. I'm sure I'll do some damage one fine day. So Mad World's pretty much the same. It's like sitting in the window of this uh, apartment and watching everyone go about their business nine to five. You know, very, lu not luxury, but sort of, it's quite sort of, a bizarre viewpoint to sort of watch people go around their um, daily routines and having to work for a living when you're sitting in a flat unemployed. So that's where it came from. talks at the time that it had a suicidal side? Uh, yeah, that's not exactly true, is it? Because no. Um, no. we were very much into the writings of Arthur Yanov, Dr. Arthur Yanov, his books, Primal Scream. And all he was saying was that some of the most dramatic dreams we have release the most tension. So we can have this ridiculous dream that, that and wake up feeling a lot better. So the dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had. Doesn't necessarily mean I can't wait to die. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces. Bright and early for the daily races, going nowhere, going nowhere. It was 
actually quite amazing to hear when it first came along. We both think it's truer to the lyrics than our version, you know, yeah. um, in the sense that the recording is very dark also. I think what, you know, we became popular because of the the sort of juxtaposition of quite serious and intense lyrics with actually a kind of pop sound. Um, so our versions of songs tended to be a bit more upbeat, um, whereas that is really the emotion of the lyric. I find it hard to tell you, I find it hard to take. The people run in circles, it's a very, very 